Welcome to Path to the Great War. This is Melinda Klein. Without a doubt, an element of the rise of conflict between European powers by the 1910s is tied to family dynamics resulting in political consequences. In a subsequent section, it will become clear that family politics were clearly linked and were close. We know about the tensions and the family political objectives between the children and grandchildren of Queen Victoria herself through the surviving letters so honored to elevate for content and meaning by journalist Catherine Clay and her latest book called King Kaiser and Tsar, published in 2007. Through marriage into royal houses of Europe, Queen Victoria had, in time, become the grandmother of Europe. The United States, by the last year of the war, this is 1917, would enter this war after the British intercepted and deciphered a secret communication between, apparently, Mexico and the German government under Kaiser Wilhelm II. This purported the United States Congress to act and declare war based on the assumption that Mexico, if this had been an alliance, lay as a serious threat to national security on the American continent. From the American standpoint, this was just another one of those conflicts between European neighbors that have occurred so many times. President Wilson fought hard within diplomatic channels to end the European conflict throughout the period of neutrality. From the government's point of view, the war was not inevitable. This is a topic that deems further exploration because this is not the perspective from the British point of view or of Europeans on the continent. They saw it coming. A looming factor in the inevitability of war between the two superpowers, Britain and Germany, stood on who would reign supreme on the high seas, be the military power, and who would possess the most colonies, making the nations wealthy and powerful. Consider the four following topics as contributing to the rise of conflict between European nations. 1. Militarism. 2 imperialism, three, secret diplomacy, which would include alliances, political pacts, family intrigue and rivalries, uh, influence political decision making, followed by number four, an arms race. Was this war seen as coming? What evidence do we have? As recently pointed out by Niall Ferguson in 1998 with his book, The Pity of War, Yes, popular fictional themes portrayed leading European nations in armed conflict. This made for popular reading by British, French, and German readers. Sooner or later, it seemed, war would become inevitable between the great powers of Europe. It is often asserted the Great War was the result of clashing cultural conflicts. In nations with standing armies and navies, Set in a time when leading powers were building up their arms, magazines published serial stories. A popular theme among readers was an invasion plot. Why did the Germans gamble on war in 1914? Historically speaking, when a nation has, in the past, enjoyed glory, power, and authority, it is logical to assume some politicians want to see times of glory return. By the 1910s, Europe is divided into two opposing alliances. Europe is politically two imperial factions. They seem to be on a collision course. Why did British leaders decide to enter the war in 1914? England could have had a limited involvement in the war. German politicians gambled on this. The British government, under the Articles of the Triple Entente, was not legally obligated to fight 
in defense of France or Russia. The argument for the British to go to war rested on the belief of Germany's true war aims. They believed they consisted of the following factors. First, Germany had political, economic, and cultural reasons to get involved with Russia over Serbia. Second, Germany wanted to acquire African territories held by the British for reasons of trade and resources. Third, Germany wanted to recreate or reinvent a new Holy Roman Empire under the Kaiser's control. And lastly, Germany wanted to break up the British and Russian empires by encouraging internal conflict. It looks like Britain's information on Germany's war aims were on target. On August 3rd, in 1914, Germany declared war on France with plans the following day to invade Belgium to get to France. After the British government on August 4th declared war on Germany in response to German invasion of Belgium, as... Under the 1839 Treaty of London, Britain had committed her government to protect Belgium's neutrality. On August 5th, after Britain declared war, these are the three reasons why their government had taken action to support their allies on the continent. First, the German fleet should not occupy under our neutrality the North Sea and the English Channel. Second, that Germany should not seize and occupy the northwest part of France opposite our shores. And lastly, that Germany should not violate the ultimate independence of Belgium and hereafter occupy Antwerp as a standing menace to us.